Well, good morning. morning. How wonderful is it? Is it, good, is it good to be gathered together this morning? Yes. We are so glad to be joining together. Welcome to all of you. Welcome to our choir. After a woo, after a long unintentional break, right? <laughs> well, we are glad to be gathered this morning. Uh, again, welcome to, uh, to everyone to Camarillo United Methodist Church. We are glad to be joining together. Today is Rally Sunday, the start of our fall season. And so I just want to again remind you that after worship, uh, we hope that you will be joining us for the ministry fair. I'll describe more about that uh, towards the end of this worship service. Um, but as we begin, I just want to remind you uh, in your bulletin to take a moment to fill out the, your, uh, the connect, connection card portion. Um, and even if you are a regular member, uh, please write your name down and just uh, tear it off and um, turn it in with your offering uh, during that time. And if you are joining us online, uh, uh, we invite you to go to our church website at camarillumc.org and uh, download. You can fill out the online connection card um, on the website, and you can also download today's uh, worship bulletin and follow along in the worship service. Uh, what else? Oh, and if you're new to the church, we extend a special welcome to you. 
Um, and again, invite you to visit our church website at camarillounc.org. We are updating a lot of things as the fall season is starting up. So we encourage you, uh, even regular um, member attenders, to visit our church website uh, sometime this week as new events and new programs will be uh, loaded up onto our website this week. We are always grateful for the gift of altar flowers and today's arrangement. We have two arrangements here. Um, our first arrangement, let's see, this one is in celebration, uh, given by Debbie Bates in celebration of her birthday. Where's Debbie? Oh, there she is. Woo! Today is her actual birthday. Uh, so should we sing? Sure, why not? Happy to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Debbie, happy birthday to you. Well, we, we wish a, a, a wonderful birthday wish to Debbie. Um, and. On, in your flower dedication, you also uh, mentioned Art and Blanche as well, so... Oh, Mom and Dad. You guys all just coordinated and had birthdays right there. Okay, so the, happy birthday to the whole family. Our second arrangement, um, the one right here, is given by uh, Lisa Karawaki in loving memory of her husband, Mark Higgins. And so, again, uh, we pray uh, that God grant Lisa, with many joy and peace as she cherishes her memories with, with Mark. With that, um, I'm going to invite you. We have a different order of, of, of service than we've been used to for the past year. So it, it just means that you'll be on, need to be on your toes today um, as we have a new uh, order of worship. We're going to lead into a, a time of call to worship, and I'm going to invite our liturgist, Karen Gundafinger, to lead us at this time. I'm going to invite you to stand as you're able and turn your attention to her. The call to worship is found in your bulletin. God is calling us today. Come, let us worship and celebrate God's love for us. Let us show our words and deeds. Please join in singing step by step the music and words are printed on the insert. Sometimes the night is beautiful. Sometimes the sky was so far away. Sometimes it seems to be so close. You could touch it on your heart. So much you 
Our first scripture reading comes from Psalm 1. This is a psalm of guidance, advising the listener of the importance of walking among the righteous versus the wicked. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so for the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of the Bible. Amen. Good morning. We have lots of children today. I'm so happy to see so many kids here. So, guys, we just heard a reading from Psalms 1. And if you remember, there's a lot of Psalms in the Bible. There's 150. And we got to hear the very first one. And I heard a lot of words in there. A lot of words. I heard the word wicked. I heard sinners. I heard mockers. And I heard wicked again. Now, does that sound like how you want to be? And the kind of friends you want to have? Do you want your friends to be wicked sinners and mockers? Okay, good. Me neither. Me neither. So I am going to ask um, Kitten, will you come and put this sad face on my board here? Because those are not good ways to be, right? right. We're going to go sad face. Yeah. But I also heard the word um, blessed. And I heard the word righteous. Well, what do you think of those words? Good, I got a thumbs up. Yes, I want to be blessed. I would be happy if someone called me righteous. So I'm going to ask Austin, will you come and put this angel happy face emoji on this side of my board? Because those are good ways to be, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. You do. So here's the thing. I also heard this. Delight in the law of our Lord. A law is like a rule. You guys delight in laws and rules? Do you love them and delight in them and get excited about them? Or do you kind of think, eh, laws and rules? Who gets excited about that? But I want to explain something to you. One of our commandments from God, one of the Ten Commandments says, Thou shalt not lie. But you might think it's easier to tell a lie one day. It might, you might be tempted to tell a lie. But here's the thing. If you get caught telling a lie, you're probably going to get in trouble for not being honest. And I think if I told a lie and I got caught, it would be super embarrassing. I would be so embarrassed for someone to know I just made something up that wasn't true. Here's the thing, if you tell the truth all the time, every time, guess what happens? Oh, people start to trust you. They start to count on what you say and believe you, and they look up to you as an honest and trustworthy person. And you know what? That feels really good. Who thinks that would feel good to be trusted and believed and respected? It feels so good. All of God's laws are like that. We benefit from following them. They're designed for our good and our safety. Here's another example. All of your moms, every one of them, they have the same rule. You are not allowed to run in the street. You are not allowed to run around in a parking lot. How many of you delight in that and wake up every day and think I'm so excited that I cannot run in the street? But here's the thing. It's worked pretty well for you so far. It's kept you safe and alive. Because if you go running out into traffic, 
that's not going to work out very well if you get hit by a car, is it? So your mama had a good idea when she made this law for you, this rule. And that's how the rules and the laws are. They come from someone who cares about us, like our parents. All of your mom's rules are for the good of your home, the good of your family, or for your health and safety. And God is like that too. Now I heard something else in here. And it says, meditate on his laws. Hmm. If we think about God's ways before we act, that is meditating on his laws for us. And it helps us to use self-control in our words and in our actions. Now, does that work out well for us? Yeah, that's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. Think about what God wants us to do. Now, I heard something else. I heard something else in Psalm 1. This sounds very beautiful, very poetic. It says people that delight in God's law and think about his law are like a river. They're like a tree that grows next to a river. Now, if you were a tree, would you want to live in the desert where it might be hard to get the water and the nutrients you need, or would you want to be next to a river? Then the roots grow into the ground and you have access to all the water, the, the moisture, the nutrients. You need to grow into a strong tree, a healthy tree. And it says that that tree will bear fruit in its season. It's easier for a tree to bear fruit when it has what it needs. And we're so lucky because we have what we need to be like that tree. <gasps> we have this. What is this? This is the Bible, God's holy word. And in it, he tells us so many things about a good way to live. He tells us a soft answer turns away wrath. So if someone's being mean and you answer with kindness, that probably will calm that person down. So many little wise nuggets in here for us to learn how to live a good life, a long life, and a healthy life. Why does God give us so many laws? Do you guys know? Yes. To keep us safe and because he... Bingo, because he loves us. So we can delight in God's ways and take every opportunity to follow his laws. And then our life will be blessed, just like we heard in Psalm 1. We will be righteous. Our life will be blessed. We'll be like a tree by the water. Will you guys pray with me? Father God, I thank you for a fun day at church, for Rally Sunday, for a chance to come together. I thank you for all the promises that we find in your word. Help us to think about them and follow them that we might be blessed by you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We come to a time in our worship service uh, for prayer. Um, and so, but before I enter into, um, uh, begin praying, I do want to share with you some uh, announce, uh, word that we received. We received word yesterday that Mary Sus. Uh, Sustarsik. Mary Sustarsik uh, is in her final hours at the hospital, and so we pray for God's strength and peace to be, be upon her as she transitions uh, from this life to God's eternal kingdom. Also, please note that the memorial service for Reverend Bobby McMullen and John McMullen uh, will be held this Saturday here in the sanctuary at 11 a.m. Uh, Reverend Bobby passed away last year, but due to COVID, uh, we had um, delayed her service, and now we are able to hold her service this Saturday. So I hope that you will be here to celebrate her life and her ministry. Let us all join together in prayer now. Let us bow our heads. O oh God of love and of mercy, we gather in celebration this morning, O oh Lord, as we kick off our fall season. We are excited that after more than a year of having many of our ministry programs being put on hold, we are able to relaunch our ministries and reconnect with our congregation and the community. Lord, we pray that you will empower us as we commit to, the, to learning and to growing, to building fellowship and reaching out to those in need of, those in need of knowing who you are that you are always with us. 
Enable us, O oh God, to overcome obstacles that come our way as we look to strengthening our ministry and reaching beyond the walls of the church for the sake of your kingdom. Lord, as we are excited of the start of the fall season, we are also very mindful of the significance of yesterday's date. On the 20th anniversary of the tragic incident of 9-11, we recall the feelings of shock and hopelessness while the world that we knew turned upside down. We remember the smoke and the despair and the grief. But even in the midst of turmoil, we give thanks for the glimpse of your hand of grace working through the people all around. We remember the heroes who came together from all places to work together as one in the recovery efforts. We witness the overwhelming testimonies of good that rose out of that darkness. And so in the midst, even in the midst of all, all of life tragedies, we are reminded that your faithfulness and trust in your grace in times of crises, your presence will always be there to sustain us. And so, oh God, we continue to lift up prayers for those in our midst who struggle with life. But we pray for, with confidence, your presence with us. We pray for Mary Sestarsik as she prepares to greet you in your heavenly kingdom. May your spirit guide her to your place. May she cling to your assurance of eternal life. And may, and may her family be comfor comforted by your peace. We pray for Michelle and Tammy as they prepare to prepare for Reverend Bobby and, and John McMullen's memorial service this week. May we celebrate their lives and give thanks to you for the many ways that, that you have blessed us with their presence. We thank you, O oh God, for all your servants around us who share in your love and bless one another. We also lift up prayers for Reverend Lee Truman as he seeks treatment at the hospital. May you work through the hands of the physicians in providing the care that he needs. We pray for Claire Smith's son, Christopher, and daughter-in-law, Becky, as they seek recovery, full recovery from COVID. Lord, we pray for everyone in our society that continue to struggle with this pandemic. Grant us patience and courage hope and strength to endure and to overcome the hardships created by this pandemic. Oh God, we pray for relief of pain for Mary Jo Carson and a quick recovery from her fall. And we pray for peace to Joy Hart's daughter-in-law as she is in hospice and comes to term with her mortality. May your peace abound in the hearts of all those struggling and may your presence be the light that shines upon all our futures. Lord, there are other prayers that we hold in our hearts. Hear them, receive them, as we lift them up to you in silence. O oh God, you are faithful. You are faithful in providing us with your strength and hope. You are faithful in leading us through the trials of life and delivering us from the calamities that overwhelm us. Continue to empower us as your people to do the work of ministry, to engage in spiritual growth, and to live in ways that follow, that, that testifies to the love and the grace of your son, Jesus Christ. For it is in his name that we pray the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. As mentioned earlier, the memorial service for Reverend Bobby McMullen and John McMullen. Um, John passed away, uh, uh, I think, three years ago, and of course, uh, Reverend Bobby passed away last year. Uh, their service will be held this Saturday at 11 a.m. 
Uh, there will be a lunch reception afterwards, and their daughters, Michelle and Tammy, uh, they are coming down from uh, Vegas, uh, where they live, to be here to celebrate their lives and to uh, give thanks to God. And so, again, we hope that you will join us in celebrating uh, their life and ministry with us. As we start the fall season, uh, there are many programs that will be starting up, including the, the adult ministry classes. Uh, two of those classes start up next Sunday. Um, a Bible study class on the Gospel of John, and uh, that's led by Reverend John Wood, and the uh, Sunday service discussion group led by Ron Honeycutt. Those two will be starting up uh, next week. And so uh, I, I'm announcing that today so that you kind of would plan ahead uh, for next week, uh, plan to stay uh, after worship uh, to participate in those classes. There are other things. And uh, again, um, this coming week, there are so many other things. Again, invite you to go to the ministry fair to, to see all the various programs starting up. One other offering uh, that is going to be starting up in the co coming weeks is a boned, not bone, bone builder class. Um, this is a certified class uh, led by the city of Oxnard, uh, and it will be on Tuesdays and Fridays. Um, there are two sessions, uh, one at 9 o'clock and the other at 1030. Uh, they do require that you attend uh, twice a week for this, um, this class. Um, but because this class is being led by the city, uh, there is a wait list um, from the public. But because, again, it is being held here, CUMC members have priority signing up. Um, and so uh, we were told that uh, the, the class will go public next week, uh, not tomorrow, but the following Monday. And so we have all this week uh, until next Sunday to be the first ones to register. Uh, and then afterwards, um, um, it will be open to um, the public. Uh, you can register by going to our church website or notifying the church office. And lastly, the, the Red Cross Blood Drive will be here on September 26. Uh, app appointments can be made by going to the Red Cross website and putting the sponsor code Camarillo UMC. Uh, we invite you to sign up uh, today because the appointments uh, for that go public tomorrow. With that, um, with all these ministries activities, uh, we truly give thanks to God for the appointments, uh, for the, uh, these opportunities to serve and to be involved. Uh, we now take this time to give of our tithes and our offering as a sign of gratitude uh, for the blessings that God bestows upon us. And so I invite the ushers to come now, to come forward to receive our tithes, gifts, and our offering. <laughs>
prayer of dedication found in your bulletin. O oh God, you graciously pour out your blessing upon us. Your gifts surround us and all that we have are gifts from your hand. And so we return a portion back as a sign of gratitude and a reflection of our love to you. Bless and multiply them for the sake of your kingdom. Amen. Our scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, verses 28 to 34. Listen to Mark's account of Jesus teaching the great commandment to love God and to love one another. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another, and seeing that Jesus answered them well, he asked, which commandment is first of all? Jesus answered, the first is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, you are right. Teacher, you have truly said that he is the one and besides him there is no other and to love him with all, our, all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength and to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that, he answered wisely. He said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any questions. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Well, gracious, loving God, we are grateful to you as we come together uh, this day. What a glorious day it is as we come and, and celebrate the start of new programs, a new season. And especially, oh God, the, the, the homecoming, the regathering of our congregation with music, with the choir, with all that you bless us today. We are truly mind, mindful, oh God, of all the blessings that you bestow upon us. And so we truly, truly come here with hearts of gratitude. And we are mindful, oh God, of the need to be here. And so, oh Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit be upon us as we... Uh, uh, dedicate this time to, to hearing from you what your spirit have to say to us. Lord, we pray that your spirit will open up our hearts, our minds, and our ears, that we may be receptive to what you have to say as we reflect upon the scriptures before us. And we pray that the meditations of all of our hearts and the words of our mouth be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. In Christ's most holy name we pray. Amen. Okay. Having a little technical difficulty here. It's a little slow. We'll see. We'll, we'll manage, right? Um, there we go. So there's a story uh, about a recent family gathering uh, where a grandmother uh, was coaxed by the family of, to do something different that she had never done before. With a lot of, you know, a bit of friendly badgering, she was encouraged to try out one of those um, uh, stationary exercise bicycles. Apparently, she needed a little work. Anyhow, uh, so slowly, she, uh, she got onto this bicycle. And oh, so carefully, she, she, she got on the bicycle and took her time getting in the, the, the right, you know, get, getting in the right position. And she checked the grip, she checked the seat, and, and you know, made sure that uh, she felt comfortable with the pedals. And then she waited for a while. And finally, she said to her family, okay now, you can turn it on now. <laughs> if, only, if only work at church could be handled like that, right? Where, where we could just magically flip a switch and, and then just watch the work be done for us automatically. Oh, that would be so nice. Um, especially in weeks like this past week 
when I was literally running around, you know, I was really running out of steam. But work in the church does not work that way. Uh, as I've heard it said before, uh, the work of the church requires a blend of divine inspiration and human perspiration. And today, I invite us. I invite us to imagine what our church would be like when we are firing on all cylinders, being what God wants us to be, and doing what God wants us to do. To be a church that loves God with all our heart, with all our soul, with, our, with all our mind and all our strength, and to love our neighbors as ourselves with all our might, and to share the message of Jesus everywhere we go. You see, that's the mission. That's the mission of the church. And for the next three weeks, we'll be looking deeper at what it means, the mission. As you can see in the bulletin cover, mission possible. Not impossible, but it's mission possible because it is by the grace of God that, God, that leads us. And so we begin today with what is known as the great commandment. This very teaching that Jesus gives us to love the Lord with all our hearts, with all our soul, with all our mind, with all our strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. And so in the gospel lesson that we read today, one of the religious leaders goes up to Jesus and asks, what, which of the commandments is the first? Which of the commandments is the greatest? Now, even though the Bible says that this religious leader was a scribe, um, which basically means that he was a lawyer, um, and he could, you know, and in the other um, gospels, it 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 refers that that he was actually he could have been trying to test Jesus. But even so, the question that he's asking was actually a legitimate one. You see, the in the Jewish tradition, there are there are six hundred thirteen laws. 613 laws that the rabbis and the lawyers uh, in the Jewish, Jewish tradition has to study. Now that's a lot of laws. And to give you a comparison of how, you know, how, why that's a lot of laws, in our own United States Constitution, do you know how many laws we have? We actually only have seven articles. And of that seven, there are only 27 amendments. That's it. Our United States Constitution only has 27 amendments, and we know that out of those 27 amendments, how complex, right, how complex is our legal interpretation, how, you know, how that can be. So imagine having three, uh, 613 of those amendments. That's a lot. That's a lot of, of arguments that, that, that would have happened. Of course, the Israelites didn't start out with 613 laws. They started out with 10. And we know those 10, right? Those are the 10 commandments. But out of those 10 commandments, more were added over time so that to make sure that the people were not breaking the original 10 commandments. More laws were added as sort of as barriers and, and safety nets. For example, the fourth commandment is keep the Sabbath day holy. Well, what does that mean, to keep the Sabbath day holy? Well, for religious leaders, uh, it meant focusing completely on God for that day. And so one should not be doing things for him or herself. So they wrote laws around that fourth commandment to make sure that people weren't breaking that fourth commandment, such as, you know, you should. You shouldn't be doing any work on the Sabbath. Now, what does it mean to, you know, what constitutes work on the Sabbath? So they've created even another law stating that, well, one of them it says, if you carry even a chair or a mat for more than 10 feet, that constitutes work. <laughs> and they had these, all these laws built upon each other. To, to carry something for 10 feet, that would be breaking the Sabbath, and so on. You get the point, right? So you can see how crazy this would have become. 
those, from the 10 laws, 10 commandments, came 613 laws. So the lawyer, <clears throat> so the scribe, goes up to Jesus and asks a very good question. Essentially saying, out of all these hundreds of laws, which is the imp most important? I would like to know, Jesus, what is the greatest commandment of all? And Jesus' response is to love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and greatest commandment. There wasn't anything original about Jesus' answer. You see, in fact, what Jesus did was he took what was already written in the Old Testament. It's what Moses had taught 1,500 years earlier. But what Jesus was saying to the religious leaders was that, you know, and, and the religious leaders who were legalistic in all of their practice of faith, what Jesus was saying was, it doesn't matter how, how many times you dot the I or cross your T, if you fail to love God with everything that you have, if you fail to put God first in every area of life, it doesn't matter if you're following these other things. To love God is the most prime, is the primary commandment. Expanding on that, what does that mean, to love God? What does it mean to really love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength? Well, for me, the best way I can uh, make sense of what love is, is to think about, well, my relationship with my wife, Grace. This past week, um, yeah, she's sitting right there. She's staring at me. So um, <laughs> this past week, <laughs> we celebrated our 26th anniversary. Yeah. 26 years. That's actually a lot of years. I've officially uh, surpassed the number of years, uh, the n number of years that I've been married to Grace now. The number of years I've been married to Grace is now longer than the number of years that I lived as a single person. That's unfathomable to me. Anyhow, during those years, during these many years, uh, I've learned a few things. Actually, I learned a lot of things. But uh, one of the things that I learned uh, quickly uh, is realizing that love, although it's exciting and you, um, it's actually not really a feeling or, you guys know where the song came from, right? I'm assuming. Love boat. Um, <clears throat> well, what I learned was that love, it's not really a feeling or an emotion. You know, one of the aspects of ministry that I love, that I enjoy, is meeting with couples for premarital counseling. And oftentimes, when I, uh, when I first meet with these couples, you can, you can actually see these hearts floating around them <laughs> and on top of their heads. <laughs> they're usually on cloud nine, um, and their whole view of life is through these rose-colored glasses. And so during my, uh, the, the course of my meetings with them, you know, during the counseling session, you know, one of the goals that I strive to accomplish is to uh, shatter those glasses. <laughs> no, what I try to do is bring them back down to reality. And I teach them that love is not an emotion, but it has to do it has to be rooted in faith and commitment. Jesus said in the Gospel of John, chapter 15, if you love me, then you'll keep my commandments. And to keep the commandments means to be committed in doing whatever it takes to show that love. I'm sure many of us have heard, heard it um, said in this way, that love is an action word, right? You guys probably heard that phrase. It requires commitment to carry out our love in action. Dr. Gary Chapman, a relational anthropologist, states that there are five languages of love. How do you guys know about these five languages? I see some nods. So I'm going to go over those um, five, five ways. Five ways in which we express how we love beyond just saying the words, I love you. 
I do say that a lot, Grace. But it takes more than that because she look, kind of looks at me sometimes and goes, really? Um, so how do we express love? The five languages, as many of you might know, include words of affirmation, acts of service, giving gifts. Yes, that's in there. Uh, spending quality time and offering physical touch. And in these ways, in those ways, we express love. And we do the same in considering how we express love to God as well. Words of affirmation. Words of affirmation are the words that we say that testify to our love of God. You know, some, someone once said, friends of God tell their friends about God. One of the ways that, that we express that we love God is by sharing with others our stories of God being present in our lives. It is our witness that God is central in how we're living. If we love God, then we share our testimonies. Think about that. That's how, through the words of affirmation, we are saying, yes, God, we do love you. Acts of service. Acts of service are, 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 the, are the physical actions that display our love to one another, right? And so, in terms of expressing our love to God, we love God through the, our service to God within and outside the church. These are the works that we do in serving on church ministries, uh, serving on various church ministry teams, helping with uh, teach Sunday school, take care of the nursery, providing meals to the hungry, you know, picking fruit for food share for the community, and, and, and shedding a little perspiration to help our neighbors. Those are ways that we are saying, yes, God, we love you by caring for others, our neighbors, helping our neighbors. These actions show our love for God. Giving gifts. Giving gifts is another way of expressing love. We tend to do this well with our, our, our children and our significant others, right? Grace taught me uh, early in our marriage. Um, she taught me early on that there are, there are five special days in the year that I should never forget. Her birthday, our anniversary, Christmas, Valentine's, and Mother's Day. Guys, listen to this. All right. So these are the things that I've learned. Uh, and then on those days, uh, I should be getting her either flowers or cake or you know, a present of some sort or at least a simple card. Well, likewise, we love God through our giving, through our tithes, our offering, but the way that we are generous with the resources that God gives us. Those are ways in which through our devotion, we are showing our commitment to God. Number four, we express our love to God by spending quality time. This is probably the, the most difficult for many of us, many people, since we live in such a hectic and busy life. Making time to spend with our loved ones is probably the number one way of signifying that they are truly important to us. And so likewise, spending time with God means blocking out time for worship, for personal devotion, and prayer. I've always heard from folks, I don't have time. I don't have time for this, I don't have time for that. But listen, the reality is that we always have time. We always have time for the things that we prioritize. Isn't that true? We always have time for the things I prioritize. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, when it comes to our faith, where is our priority? Do we prioritize our time with God? Lastly, number five, physical touch. Now this is a hard one, right? How do we go about touching God? It's, how do we touch God? Yeah. It's none other than touching the one whom God cherishes the most, each other. Jesus said the greatest, the second greatest commandment is this, that you shall love your neighbor as yourself. We physically touch God when we gather with one another in community. 
one of the um, greatest ways that the church brings uh, people together so that we can love each other is through groups and gatherings. Isn't this why we are, we've been so eager to come together and worship after being home all this time and seeing, well, just seeing me online, that wasn't that fun, right? This is better. There are ways in which we do that. There are our, our United Methodist women's, you know, our, our women's groups that gather for accountability, fellowship, and, and mission. There, there's the, the quilter group that gathers for a common interest. And, and last year, that common interest led to the mission work of, of making masks during the coronavirus. There is the spiritual growth group and the Sunday uh, service discussion group that will be starting up next week. You know, there are going to be, there's Bible study groups and, and the maker ministry group. And even the media team is a group that not only loves tinkering with stuff, and hopefully they can get some of these things to work, um, but beyond that, they have each other's back. They love working together. There's a group for everyone. The trustees, the weeding group, worship teams, and so many more. Don't get mad if I didn't um, name one of your groups, but there are so many ways. These are the ways in which we express to God the love that we have. Spreading love, showing love, and living out that love. You see, to love God and neighbor is a vertical and horizontal relationship. That gives meaning from our faith. It's the form of a cross. Did you know that? Our relationship with God and our relationship with one another. It's the symbol of of Jesus' sacrifice. But Jesus' sacrifice was not just about shedding blood on the cross to wash away sins. Jesus' sacrifice was the ultimate act of love. As he said, there is no greater love than to lay down one's life for others. And so as we look at what mission our church may have will be, step one is to follow the great commandment to love expressing that love with one another and with God. In other words, expressing a radical love that connects all people with one another. And so for us, to show God how much we love him is by loving one another and building a church based on relationships. That's the kind of church that I hope that we will become, that we will be. One that does not exclude but includes everyone. And I hope that you share in that vision with me as we launch into this new year. Amen. With that, I invite us to join together in singing our closing song, page 2218 of The Faith We Sing, the thin black uh, songbook, You Are Mine. Again, that's page 2218, and we, I believe we'll be singing just the first two verses.
before we close, I want to uh, remind you to head over to Brooks Hall uh, for the ministry fair. But um, I, before you do, I'm going to give you a little uh, explanation of how things are going to work in there. Um, when you enter into the hall, there's going to be a uh, sort of like a, a check-in, a registration desk. And you're, you're going to be picking up, oh, I wish I had brought um, a sample, a passport. Okay, there's a little passport. It looks like a passport. It says CUMC Ministry Fair 2021. Um, you'll be picking up a passport, and you're invited to visit each station. We have 23 stations in there. There's a lot of ministry uh, groups happening. And so when you visit each station, talk to them, ask about what's going on, and you're going to receive a stamp. And you're going to get a stamp on your passport. And um, when you have filled up your passport, take that back to that registration table and, um, and oh, make sure that you write your name on that passport. And then uh, drop it into this uh, bucket. And there are prizes. There are gift cards uh, from Presto Pasta, Mr. Softy, and oh, Starbucks. Hey. Um, so again, when you go there, make sure you fill out this uh, 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 passport. There's also food. The food will be served outside on the patio, but all the ministry tables are inside. Um, again, that's so that uh, we can keep our masks on while we are in the hall. Again, today's a great day. And as we go uh, and, and look at all these ministry uh, uh, ministries of our church, I hope that you will engage and be excited about what um, our church has to offer all of us. So with that, I invite you to receive the benediction. Go forth. May you be a light that shines upon others the love of God. May you love God through your actions and through your words, through your thoughts and through your hopes. May you spread that love to the world that this world may be transformed by your faith. Amen.